Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about the four most common myths in landscape photography. The first myth I'm gonna talk about is that you always have to shoot with a tripod. Tripods are great. They allow you to get the maximum details, the best sharpness, do long exposure, exposure blending, focus stackings, but there are times where the tripod can get in the way, slow you down, and limit your creativity. An example of this would be this photo right here. That day I had my camera on my tripod and I was looking for a long exposure of the pier and the sunset. But then I started to notice some dolphins swimming around, so I decided to grab my camera, start chasing those dolphins until I got this shot. If I wouldn't have done that, I would have stayed locked down on the same composition and I would have gotten the same photo that everybody gets of a pier and a sunset. Another example of this would be this photo right here that I took in the Everglades while an alien was just arriving to our planet. I decided just to grab my camera, stand still for 30 seconds without even breathing to be able to get this shot. Just kidding, that's a long exposure using my tripod. Now let's go for the second me. The second me I'm gonna talk about is that the only lens that you can use for landscape photography is a wide angle. Wide angles are awesome. They allow you to show these great vistas and to get everything in one shot. But to think that that's the only lens you can use for landscape photography is to put a limit on your creativity. Actually, my favorite lens for landscape photography is my 70 to 200. And this is because this lens allows me to focus more on the details and I isolate certain parts of the landscape and add some essence of mystery to my photos, making the viewer to want to learn more about the picture. An example of this would be these two photos right here. The first shot was taken at 24 millimeters and this allowed me to get the whole scene, the lake, the reflection, the sky, the beautiful colors, the sunset. Now I'm gonna show you the second image. This photo was taken at 200 millimeters and I focused on the tree that was in the middle of the lake. To me, this was one of the most interesting subjects that I had in the whole landscape. And using my telephone allowed me to isolate it and create a really interesting picture. Other examples of using a telephoto to shoot landscapes will be these photos right here. The third meeting I'm going to talk about is that the best photos are taken only during sunrise and sunsets. I love photographing the sunrise and the sunsets. They can give you some beautiful colors, some beautiful light, but to think that those are the only times where you can go out and shoot is to put a limit on your creativity. As a photographer, I have learned that there is no such thing as bad light. There is only lack of creativity. Good light is the result of how we work with the available light to come up with a great image. So as photographers, we need to learn to work with any available light. We won't always have those pink and yellow skies. So we need to learn to work with the light that we have at the moment. An example for all of this will be these photos. I took these photos on one of my favorite locations in the Everglades on a really rainy day. When I got to the location, I started to walk around the lake to get different ideas on how to use the light available. So I was able to come up with these images by using the patches of light that the clouds were giving me. Another thing you can do if you don't like to shoot on the harsh light is just walk into the shade. An example of this will be these photos that I took on my last trip to Fakahatchee. It was a really sunny day, really hot, so I decided to walk into the shade and try to come up with different images. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is that to be able to get beautiful images, you have to be a Photoshop master. A lot of people think that to get beautiful images, they need to learn every little detail in Photoshop. And that's not true. It is more important that you are able to capture those unique moments and compensate them by creating a strong composition and using the right settings. We have to see Photoshop just as a final touch to our images. Now I'm gonna take a moment to say thank you to my sponsors. Well, I don't have any, but if you guys like my video, please subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. See you next time.